incredible! Wow, that's incredible! What's up guys, Jared here with another incredible movie review. So everyone knows that Pixar is the king of animation. Toy Story, Up, Coco, and one of the best superhero movies out there, The Incredibles. Well, fast forward 14 years and we finally have a proper sequel, The Incredibles 2. So is Incredibles 2, um, incredible? Let's find out. So Incredibles 2 literally picks up right where the first one left off. The whole trying to stop the Underminer doesn't really go as planned, but does catch the eye of tech mogul Winston DeVar, who has this brilliant plan to bring supers out of hiding and back into the limelight. And Elastigirl is the best bet for this plan, as she is out trying to stop crime against this newly introduced screen slaver and try to make a great image for other supers. Mr. Incredible is stuck at haunt. Mr. Incredible is stuck at home trying to play this Mr. Mom role. Taking care of teenage girl problems, the ridiculousness of common core math. Seriously, stop trying to teach common core math. It's hella confusing. And caring for Jack-Jack and all of his changing powers. Incredibles 2 was years and years too late, but man, does this live up to the original. The whole film and voice cast doesn't skip a beat at all, even though they haven't played these roles for a better half of a decade and a half. And that's the thing, these voice actors are what makes these characters. They add personality into the film, they make these characters who they are, and like I said, they haven't played these characters for a long time, but it doesn't even sound or feel like they've taken a break at all. Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, and Samuel L. Jackson make their return to form, but the addition of Bob Odenkirk and Katherine Keener as these kind of like tech business siblings or whatever add even more to the cast and lovable personality of this overall film. The animation of Incredibles 2 was superb to say the least. Looking back at the original, this sequel definitely has the same animation vibe and style, but it takes everything and cranks it up to 11. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder these go to 11 the colors are brighter, the landscapes and cityscapes feel more alive, there's more going on, and the characters, down to the details of their costume and hair, it's just insane how well they detailed everything. Especially a scene where Jack-Jack's hair is like wetted down, and you can just see how the hair is animated on the screen, that like little tiny fibers of everything, it's so detailed down to the littlest bit of this animation. And also the hustle bustle animation of like a chase scene with Elastigirl and the Elasta Cycle really ramped up the action in this film, which was a solid step up from the first film. Like the fight scenes in this are really more enjoyable, they're action packed, they're more cinematic, and there's even more team up scenes between the characters. Plus with all of these other superheroes making their debut, it added that extra spicy goodness into this film of superhero powers where there's lightning, essentially a girl that can use portal guns, and this one guy that has really bad indigestion. This sequel's plot actually focused on family a little bit more, kind of the give and take of a family dynamic. Mr. Incredible has to take on the role of stay-at-home dad, take care of the kids and all of that, while Elastigirl is out kind of making a living saving the world. After the first day, he thinks it's pretty much easy, but after a while, these kids start taking a toll on him, Jack-Jack is more than a handful, and he realizes that his wife does a lot. I also like this like little theme that they kind of added into the film where like being part of a family, it's not always going to be the greatest. You have to give up, you know, their sacrifice, giving and taking from other people. But in the end, everyone is happy and that's what makes a family. Outside of all of that, this movie had some great Pixar humor thrown into it as well. I'm not going to ruin anything, but there's a lot of times that you're smiling, laughing, especially a particular scene where it's Jack-Jack late at night. Now, I will say, I thought the villain was a little bit weak. There are quite a few twists and turns in this film, but there's this one character that just kind of feels out of place, and finally layers are peeled back and they identify their true identity. Personally for me, it wasn't a big surprise and it kind of felt like the syndrome reveal from the first film. Overall, Incredibles 2 is the long-awaited Pixar film that everyone has been waiting for, and I guess you could say it's incredible. With a great voice cast, wonderful animation, action-packed scenes, a humble family theme, and some really good humor, but with a weak villain role, I would highly recommend checking out Incredibles 2. Pixar just proves that sometimes you have to be patient and wait about 14 years for something good to come along. Uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a skit here, but I am just way too hungover to do this. <laughs> 
What did you think of Incredibles 2? Was this the long overdue Pixar sequel you were hoping for? Or did this film just not live up to the 14 years of hype? I want to hear about it in the comments below. As always, you can find me on the social medias at Jared Buckendall on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Stardust. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>